Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. It's another day and it's another meter. That's right guys, I have the X-Tech Pen Multimeter, which I promise is gonna show up even better in another frame. But guys, uh, this here is an all-in-one meter. It's got some cool features and it's inexpensive, rather inexpensive, and it's a small form factor. So let's go ahead and take a look. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, guys, here we have the X-Tech. This is a 381.676 Alpha. That's what it says up here in the corner. It's the pen multimeter. And according to all the things that I see, it's got voltage for AC and DC. It's got amps for AC and DC. It's got ohms. It's got diode mode. It's got continuity. It's got non-contact voltage detection. And it's got logic. I wonder what logic is. Who knows? Interesting. Looks like a cool little tool. It's It's got quite a bit of features, and I don't think it's all that big, given the size of the box. Oh, unlike most of the other meters that I have shown recently on this channel, this X-Tech, well, for one, it comes with a, a, a manual. We don't know how good the manual is yet, but uh, it also doesn't come with a case. All the other ones came with a case. This one actually explains quite a bit. All right. Interesting. Uh, H is data hold. R is range. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Okay, so it's got max and uh, non-contact vol voltage and mode. Mode. Maximum input limit. Um, voltage AC or DC. Hmm. It says it can go up to 600 volts. I don't know if I would trust it with 600 volts. But uh, anyway, and then it actually shows you how to use the meter and these little diagrams. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. So found this guy on Amazon. You guys should know by now. I love Amazon. You can find some of the most original stuff on there. Ooh, first off. You know, every every time I'm just completely shocked on on a device. Not physically, metaphorically. <laughs> um, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I, I interrupt myself when I'm absolutely surprised. And uh, I am surprised about this meter. My first impression when I just grabbed a hold of it. Why do I, on this channel, why do I always drop the batteries? It's like, guaranteed, if the device that I'm checking out has batteries, I'm going to drop it live on the air, right? So... When I grabbed on this device and I held it, immediately what came to my mind is, wow, that, that actually feels like some quality. It actually feels really nice. Surprisingly, it's, it's really small. It's kind of long, though. Um, but it will fit in a tool bag very nicely. X-Tech, I've used their equipment for years, various types. Um, unlike the other like pen style meter that I, I talked about. This one here just has a knurled wheel, but it's it's hard plastic. It's not rubber over molded like the other one that I, I had. Uh, and it works. It definitely works. Sometimes rubber old, over molding can be a bad thing because, you know, depending on the chemicals on your hand, like the sides right here, this, this orange is rubber over molded. It's um, butylene. But anyway, um, Sometimes it's not the best thing, but this feels like quality in the hands. This little uh, spinning methane wheel. I almost wish that they had a button that would select between the functions. But uh, anyway, it's all good. So let's go ahead and let's let's set this guy up. Man, dude, people just keep on calling me. So let's set it up on voltage. Wow. First off, one of the things that matters to me the most about a meter is how fast it boots up because you're going to pull this out of your tool bag and you want to use it immediately. Like, bam. That's what, two seconds? Maybe three seconds? Really quick. The probe actually feels kind of nice. I, I wish they didn't pack it like that at that sharp angle like you guys just seen. But uh, that's all right. Uh, impressions of the probe. 
It feels like a PVC jacketed cable. That's why it's got the memory that you can see here. It's okay. I mean, PVC, it, it holds up. The boot is kind of soft. Despite the boot being a little bit soft, the banana plugs in pretty good. It's got a good bite. There's a reasonable strain relief down here at this tip. Down at this end, you have a uh, rubber over molding and that allows for a strain relief down at the probe. The probe has a little cover that protects the tip. However, it just, will, it just kind of falls off. It's going to booger off, but that exposes a insulated tip, which is removable. Check that out. And if that's not cool enough, you've got the gator clip here that you can clip on like so, it'll screw on. And then down at this end, you have a better fitting tip for that one. Insulated tip, exposed tip, and then you can put a gator clip on here. There you go. So you got a gator at both ends. You can clip your reference on someplace and you can clip this guy set it to voltage, and then you can energize the circuit to which then I would feel safe at 600 volts. I would not feel safe at 600 volts uh, any other way. But here we go. So the gator clips, there's no good place to store them, so you can bet you that they're just gonna booger off. But uh, I really dig the fact that it's got the, the twist on insulators. I will definitely use those and and maybe I'll use this one because it wants to stay on. And it's it's better if you're going to do non-contact probing, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, yeah, so that's how it is. It's the, the gun itself or the pen acts as your active probe. And then you have your reference probe over here. I dig it. Um, so it's got a bunch of features on this guy. And we're going to go ahead and just pop it over. Let's Let's do some voltage measurements just to be safe. And I always start out with the ohms because that tells me immediately the accuracy of the meter. So let's go ahead and pop it down the ohms. And does it start on continuity? No, it doesn't. Okay. And it zeroes out. Nice. All right. So let's try it. And what do we got? So mind you, this, this, uh, this resistor right here is 10 ohms plus or minus 1%. So it should be 10.1 10, 10 at best or at worst. Okay, so the ohms are seeking. And you can see right there, it, it seeked a little bit high and then it's coming down. It could be because there's a little bit of corrosion or surface corrosion, I guess you could say, on this resistor. But it does come down to 10 ohms. It, that's the slowest seeking meter I've ever seen for ohms though. It doesn't really matter because it's a small portable meter. This is for in the field. Most of the time that we're doing ohms, it's going to be like what power cords, it's going to be across resistors, um, maybe across fuses just to check it out. But um, yeah, so there's that one. Let's go ahead and pop it over to volts. I have my completely dead battery here. I'm sure this is going to be eventful. Okay, so we got uh, negative 5.48 volts DC. Let's flip that bad boy around. 5.48 in the reverse configuration. Okay, DC, the seek time is, eh, it's okay. Of course, I'm going to drop some more components. Next, let's go ahead and do AC. First thing I should probably do is hit the range, right? So it starts out in DC, and then I hit the mode. Okay, so the M is mode, and then it goes to AC, and we're ready to take AC measurement. AC is much faster seek time. So let's see, I'm out, I'm in, and 120 volt. Yep, 118.8, that's pretty quick. All right, fair enough. So XTech, 
it looks like they actually did pretty solid on this this gig right here because I was expecting it to be meh, maybe so so. So uh, logic, when you put it in logic, it goes to DC. Now, is this for doing CMOS logic? I'm I'm kind of curious. I've never seen I've never had a small multimeter that had logic before. I've seen that obviously on oscilloscopes, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it's for ultra fast switching or something like that at uh, CMOS level. But anyway, cool. Maybe I should just read the instruction manual. So we're on modes. And let's see, we got diode mode, ohms, and continuity. The one thing that I always test on this channel is going to be the continuity of a meter because that tells you the pickup time and the delay between activations on. Let's see, there's diode mode on the continuity. So let's go ahead and expose these two. Whew. Well, I can tell you, X-Tech, the one thing I don't like You can hear that it's not beeping that fast, so the, the, the seek time on the continuity is really not that good. But if you apply it and hold, it's absolutely fine. Crystal clear. Some of the cheaper meters used to have an analog continuity, which means it was just sending a signal through and looking for it to come back through to a speaker, and it would be grainy, and this appears to be definitely a digital continuity it's just the seek is not there compared to uh, even the other meters I tested on the channel recently that's okay press and hold it, it registers just fine and then we go to amps <clears throat> and this is different than most of the other meters on the market because most of the other multimeters when you go to do amps what you're going to have to do, or actually on this one, it's milliamps. Uh, you can leave it on the same exact configuration. On other meters, like even my Klein right here, you have to switch the leads over in order to go into uh, amperage. You don't have to do that on this meter, <clears throat> but this meter only does milliamps from what I see. Let's see. It does say just milliamps, right? Logic test. All right, here we go. Uh, so it uses the LEDs for logic and 0 to 1.5 volts green LED on between 1.5 and 3.5 green and red LED off. If it's between 3.5 and 5 the CMOS level red LED on. So it, it tells you if you're within spec because CPUs would normally operate between the 0 and 1.5 volt. That's that's ultra low voltage logic. And then you got your regular CMOS logic, which is, you know, your, your three and a half to five volt. So that's your red LED on. When both the LEDs are off, that, show, that means that you're out of spec between both the logic levels. Kind of a cool thing. I wish I had a circuit board all set up here to test that out. Um, so there you go. That's what logic is. Now, one of the other cool features of this meter is the non-contact voltage, the NCV. Odd thing about the non-contact voltage is there is no section on it where you're supposed to be doing that. I would think that you just hold this down and you poke it near an outlet and it will register. But that's not how you do it. Hmm. Let's put in voltage. Just non-contact voltage. Yeah. Okay. So I put it in voltage and then I hit the non-contact voltage and then stick it near a cord and it would register. Maybe not the best. Yeah, definitely not as good as my fluke. Yeah, the non-contact voltage is, is passable at best. I would not trust it. The fluke. Um, the fluke, I could be, you know, a centimeter away and it detects if there's voltage. Maybe I'm not using it correctly, but eh. it's one of those things where if I don't trust my tool, then I'm not going to use it for that function. And I'll, I'll experiment with it. Maybe do a follow up video on this. Just one of those things. Uh, I think it should have acted better than what it just did. 
I mean, it was it was not a clear indicator. It does have a voltage indicator here, and then it's got a high and a low. And the high and low, I believe, are for the logic right here. Could also be high and low voltage for non-contact, but uh, it just kind of is what it is. Let's see, non-contact, NCV. Diode test, continuity check, resistance measurements, non-contact. Test the AC voltage detector on a known live circuit before every use. Good, good to know. Verify that the batteries are good, of course. Disconnect the common test lead from the bottom, which I did. With the function switch set to any position except off, press and hold the NCV button. Move the tip of the meter near the voltage source or uh, conductor as shown. You see right here how they show it. That's how I have it set. I'm pressing it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it registered when I, I have the conductor right here, not here. Right here. It's got to be right here. Yeah, the cone. It's got to be on the cone, not at the tip. Good to know. Well, there you go. So guys, it's got high low range. It's got multiple modes. It's got a max mode. It's got very quick seeking when it comes to like booting up and being able to be used. Neat little multimeter. I'll give them that. It's a neat little multimeter. So anyway, guys, if you want to check it out or even read up more information on it, I will leave a link for this meter in the video description. Go ahead and check it out. It's a cool meter. It's very kind of lightweight. I would say that this one could easily, I could see it in one of my tool bags. Why not? All right, guys. Thanks for watching.